We greet you this morning in the name of our Father who art in heaven. Oh, what a day of rejoicing today will be when we come into his presence and we all see Jesus. We can sing, we can shout victory. Let us go to God in prayer. Almighty God, our Father, we come today trusting and believing by faith. As we trust, we believe that you who has promised, you are able to perform it. God said it, and Father God, you said it, and you will do it. It will come to pass. Continue to bless your people. Bring us out of darkness into your marvelous light. And let us show forth your praises by telling someone about the God who woke us up this morning and started us on our way. And you brought us to the house of prayer one more time. And we're here to pray, Father God, that you will bless mankind everywhere. Save sinner man, Father God, and give strength and encouragement to those that are on the battlefield for the Lord. Lord, let us continue to run on and see what the end is going to be. There's a promise. There's something at the end that is waiting for me. It's to your glory. It's for our good. It's in the precious name of Jesus we pray. And the church of the living God said, amen. We're blessed this morning to have with us our very own, our teacher, our Brother Ivory Huger. He will come and lead us in this great lesson, amen, and we just trust and believe that you will get something from this lesson, amen, as Abraham believed God, amen, in the waning years of his life, he still believed God, and therefore today we understand that the just believing God will bring salvation your way, and belief will produce works. Works does not produce salvation, but belief produces works. So let us receive Amen. Brother Huger as he come in his own way. Amen. Good morning, Garden and Grove. And good morning to the viewers that are tuning in with us this morning. I um, want to say that uh, everybody continue to pray for each other, continue to pray for me, and I'll pray for you. Uh, prayer is what we all need, and, and we can't get enough of that. Today's lesson Seeking Assurance, Romans 4, 1 through 12, Seeking Assurance. And the introduction today, we want to start with uh, Paul. Um, he wants to kind of give a lesson for both Jews and Gentiles. And he talks about faith, faith which is a central, essential part of Christ and salvation. And of course, Paul was concerned about the role of Jewish law uh, for Christians who were not Jewish descendants. And of course, we, we'll pick up in our lesson today, he's talking about circumcision. And, uh, you know, and he's gonna use Abraham and also David to make an example about faith. Because it's faith that what's, is gonna, what's important, not your works. You know, we, we can't do enough works. It's all about our faith. And uh, so many times today in today's society, I think we get that kind of twisted to think that all those works, but those works don't mean anything if you don't have any faith. Um, so you must have faith, you know, uh, righteousness before God always uh, been by faith, not by works. Amen. We'll see today in our first outline, it talks about our ancestors' faith. And the first verse says, what shall we say then that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, have found. You know that Abraham, um, he wasn't circumcised, and, and Paul is trying to get this point across. Um, you know, God justified him before that even happened. Uh, he had done some things. You know, first of all, he left his land, his homeland, <laughs> left his people. You know, that was faith you know, had to take up across dangerous lands and travel where God had asked him to go. Uh, so he had done some things in, in his life. He also was going to sacrifice his son. You know, that's some faith. You know, that, that was a lot of faith, you know, for him to do those things. So it, it was his faith. Uh, it wasn't about the circumcision or any of that thing at the time. It was about his faith. Um, but he was justified because of his faith. In verse 2, it said, For Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. Abraham, um, all of his works wouldn't have pleased God. No matter how much we do or how much you can do, it's not going to, you can't do enough to please God. 
okay? It's your faith that's what's going to, your heart and, and soul and your faith is what God is looking for, and he's going to justify. Well, Abraham was justified when he had asked him to leave. He was righteous. He, he was justified when he was asked to pick up and leave his people, okay? So when you were looking at, you, you, can, you can have works, and you can be glorified by people. But really, that's not important. And so many times, I think, you know, even in today's church, I think we, as long as the congregation agree, we're okay. But that's really not what we should be thinking about. <laughs> you know, it's God, it's God's, God is the person we should be worried about. Uh, but, you know, we're all human, so we get a little praise, and, boy, that's, that's good for us. You know, but that's, that's not good for God, okay? It might be good for us, um, but you can't. You can't be justified by God because of all those works. But humans will pat you on the back, okay? Um, and here in verse 3, it says, For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for his righteousness. He trusted God. God told him that he would have descendants that would outnumber the stars. And, and, and remember, he was an old man at this time, <laughs> you know, how, how would you, how, how am I going to have descendants? You know, we're old, you know. Um, but it was faith. It was faith. Had nothing to do with the circumcision at the time, and we'll see that later. It was his faith in God. He could have chosen to just say, okay, I'm going to either not do it or I'm going to do it. But he chose to do it. He chose to, to follow. He, he didn't reject this impossible thing that, he, that most people would think could happen. Most folks would have said, well, look, you're old. That's not going to happen, okay? But it's faith. So our faith has to be very strong. And, and as we see, as Paul showed here to the Romans, that Abraham's faith was great, okay? And he was justified by God, not because of all the works he had done, okay? All that had taken place before the works. Now, he did have some great works, as we will see throughout uh, the Bible. All right, in our second outline... It talks about our faith in God, our faith in God. And it said, now to him that worketh is the reward, not reckoning of grace, but of debt. Workers earn wages. They get paid to work for work, okay? If they work, they get paid, all right? But based on Abraham, uh, nothing of his works would have really mattered, um, he, he couldn't have been paid, and, and, and you know, it says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ for all, our God. So it wasn't, it wasn't that he, the wages what he was looking for, and, and, and Paul's trying to explain that it, it wasn't all of these things he was trying to do. It was the faith, the basis of everything. It was his faith was the basis for everything that took place. His faith is what caused him to do some of the things he did. Okay, it has nothing to do with him trying to work for pay or trying to please God. Um, and anything that we do, even in our society today, it should be to please God, not to try to please anybody else or try to, to uh, gain any notoriety, because that's not why we do it. We do it because of our faith. We do it because we're the examples. We should be the examples. Uh, and Abraham was a great example with all of the things that he had done. He didn't look for any pay. This is faith, his faith in God. That was, a, that was important, that God justify him. Verse 5, but to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, has faith is counted for righteousness. The one without works who trusts in him, the person who can justify the ungodly, faith is reckoned as righteous. This is righteousness. For him believing in someone who can, who can justify the ungodly, which is God, okay, because uh, you, you, me and you definitely can't, okay, that's, that's the person you should reckon with. That's who's going to provide your righteousness, your justification. And, and of course, he, he's showing, he's giving them this because he wants them to understand uh, there was a situation where people were questioning whether with, well, these Gentiles and they're circumcised. Okay, but he's laying it out for him. He's giving him a perfect example of the father of the faith, Abraham, and, and his faith and what who wasn't circumcised. He was eventually, okay, and, and we'll talk about it. he eventually he was, but it wasn't because of 
um, he, something he had to do. It was what God commanded him to do, okay? But his faith in God is why he did it, okay? His faith in God is why he did it. Um, verse uh, 6, and let's look at this, and, and he talks about David. Even as David also described the, the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputed righteousness without works, saying, blessed, blessed are they whose iniquity are forgiven and for whose sins are covered. David, as we know, um, David didn't do any great things to earn anything. He was just, his righteousness, God justified him. He, now, he, of course, changed, but he did some bad things. Now, remember that. He, he did some things that wasn't, wasn't right, okay? But, of course, you will see here that even David, who God imputed righteousness without, without works, he imputed righteousness without works, okay? But, of course, David had turned his life over and gave his life to God, but it was his faith that caused him to turn himself over to God and do the right things and turn his life around, okay, and dedicate his life to God. It was his faith in God, uh, not because of all his works. He did some good works, but his works wasn't the thing that, that got him justified. It was his faith, his faith in God. He could have done all of those things he wanted to do, but it wouldn't have mattered, okay? It would not have mattered. Um, and as we see the law, uh, the law of Cirque, and the law did point out some wrong people were doing, but again, the law could not justify you in the sight of God. It was God had to justify you, not the law, not Jewish law. And of course, um, again, with circumcision, there was always a question back and forth whether they were justified by God or wasn't justified by God. But here you see Paul lays it out to him. You know, here's Abraham, the father of our faith, who is just, was justified by God. God. Righteousness. Um, and as we see here, and let's look at our third outline, our faith inherited by a faithful father. Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only or upon the uncircumcision also? For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. In this we, we actually talk is blessedness. Is it only for the circumcised? Are they uncircumcised? Why well, is say faith was reckoned to Abraham as righteousness? It was brought to Abraham before circumcision. And again, as I said earlier, he was circumcised, but God commanded him to be circumcised. Okay? Now, physically, a f the physical thing really has nothing to do w w with the faith. Okay, and he's trying to get them to understand. Remember, he's writing to the Romans that, um, and, and the Gentiles and Jews, both. Okay, but it, 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 it's really an obedience that Abraham did this. It wasn't a requirement, but obedience for his faith in God when God had asked him to do so, just like God had asked him to sacrifice his son. Okay, but he believed he had his faith in God, even though I'm pretty sure he didn't want to, but his faith is what carried him through. Also, we see it says that in verse 10, how is it then reckoning when he was in circumcision or uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. How was he reckoned before? Before, he, was, he did some great things. And he did some great things after the circumcision. Okay? Um, but it said it was not after, but before he was circumcised. He wanted to point this out. Okay, before he was circumcised, he had done some great things. Okay, pointing out to these people, he had done some great things. He, he had done a lot of great things if you look back. Okay, um, but of course when he was circumcised, it was done simply because God commanded him to do it. Okay, but his faith is what ju justified him. His faith in God, nothing else, no works, none of the other things, is faith in God. And that will justify all of us, our faith, our, it's our faith is what's important. We can do all of those things we want to do, but again, you can work like a bee. But if your faith is a little shaky, <laughs> it ain't going to matter, okay? We see lots of folks who work 
like a bee, and we see it in the church today, um, and, and it's causing some issues because sometimes you can make folks think that it's okay for you to work like a bee and do the work, but then your faith is a little wavery, okay? Mm -hmm. Well, your, your faith shouldn't be wavery, all right? You should, you should be kind of like Abraham. You know, Abraham had to do some things, uh, but that one thing when he had to sacrifice his son, that, that's pretty tough. Think about it. You know, how, how strong is your faith if God asks you to do that? Okay? Uh, we might want to think about that one. Okay. In verse 11, it says, And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of righteousness. That's what it was. Of the faith which he had yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. All of his descendants, even though some will not, will not have been circumcised, Abraham was a representative for all, for all of those descendants, okay? He was circumcised. He received this, and, and again, a seal of righteousness, of, of the faith, okay? But his ancestors who, who believed uh, in Abraham, followed Abraham, even with not being circumcised, you know, their righteousness, they would be justified in reckoning if they had faith. If they had faith. That's what all is about, the faith, not anything else. They had to have the faith, okay? They have to believe. They have to believe. They have to believe that Christ died for our sins and rose for us. They have to believe that. And it's in verse 12, and Paul could have really wrapped this up real quickly, but he wanted to draw it because there was a reason why he was pointing these things out. Sometimes you can't get to the point right, right away because sometimes people will miss it. So you got to kind of let them understand some things are going on. In verse 12 it said, And the father of circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in steps of the faith of our father Abraham which he had been yet uncircumcised. If Paul wanted to point out also the Christians that even though he was done some things, he was uncircumcised, but Abraham works preceded uh, the faith. But remember, the law of Moses came centuries later. It came centuries later. So... The law really, as he's trying to tell him, the law is not it. It was his faith. All of these laws, and the ten, that came centuries after Abraham. So his faith had to have been very strong. It wasn't the law that why his, he was justified. Most folks probably missed that, that it came later on, okay? It's his faith. So we should follow the faith. Abraham had great faith in, what, in, in, in God. So we should focus on our faith and not so much the law. And even though he wasn't trying to throw out the law, because I said earlier, the law did point out some wrongs, some things, but the law wasn't the thing that does justify you. You have to have, don't put all your, your uh, I guess we want to say, don't, don't put your faith in the law. You need to put your faith in God. Okay, because that's just what's going to save you. And, and, and Paul was trying to get them to understand it. He could have told them this about Moses at the beginning, but he wanted to bring them through the process so they can understand the justification and what he had done. And, of course, our faith is very important. It, it's, it's important for us as Christians, righteousness in our lives, our faith in God. We, we also we need to practice that daily. We need to pursue that daily. We need to pursue not the works, and works is good because those are things you do have to do. Remember, Abraham had to, he did some works, okay? And we have to do some works. We have to do some things in our faith. You know, we have to go out and witness. We have to do some missionary. Well, we do have to do some things, okay? That is important. But remember, it's our faith that's an important, our faith. Make sure, in conclusion, Make sure that we practice righteousness daily uh, with the Lord. Our faith is what's important, not our works. Thank you very much.
you, God is good, yeah. Said if you trust him, he'll be good. I'm a witness that he's good, yeah. so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life just give God some praise this morning amen we serve such an awesome God uh, I just want to welcome everyone the church family Gardner Grove church family this morning this third Sunday morning uh, and all those who thought it not robbery to tune in this morning to join us in this worship service this morning, amen. It is truly a blessing to be able to stand and give God praise this morning and thank him for, for being so good to us, amen. You know, we, I mean, even when we're not our best, God is still good to us, and that is truly a blessing in itself, amen. Amen, amen. Let us bow our heads as we prepare our minds and our hearts for this morning service. Amen. Yes, Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning for your word says where two 
are more gathered in your name, Father God, that you are in the midst. So we thank you for your presence this morning, Father God. We, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. And we most of all, we want to thank you for your love and your son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for our sins. So, Father, as we stand here this morning, as we sit there at our kitchen tables this morning, Father, we ask that you just forgive us for the sins that we may have committed. Knowingly and unknowingly, Father God, we ask the forgiveness for the evil we have done in your sight this morning, Father. And we ask, Lord, that you just continue to bless this church as a whole, Father God, and all those churches that are, are, are in your name, Father God. We ask that you bless them and have a covering over them. We thank you, Father God, for bringing us out of darkness into your marvelous light this morning, Father. And Lord, as we stand in your presence, Father God, we ask that you just give us a a receiving heart this morning, Father God, to receive your word, Lord, that we may be better than we were yesterday, Father. We ask, Lord, that we just want to pray for those, Father God, this morning who are, are laying in their sick beds, Father God, who are dealing with different ailments, Lord. We ask that your healing hand be placed upon them and, and the Spirit of God move wherever they may be, Father God, that, that they may raise up with all strength, Father God, in their body, but not just in their body, but also in their spirit, Lord. Amen. So we thank you, Father God, for, for your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the Holy Spirit this morning, for greater is he that is in us than he that is in this world, Father God. So we trust in your word, Lord. We believe in your word this morning, Father God. We stand here this morning in faith, Father God, allowing your word to do what it will, Father God, in our, in our, in our, midst, in our midst and in our spirit, Father. We thank you, Father God, for our pastor this morning. We ask and continue to, to pray for him and the first lady of this house, Sister Copeland, and their family. We ask that you continue to, to lift him up and strengthen him where he may be weak, Father God. We plead the pr precious blood of Jesus over his life and over his family life. We pray for every family this morning, Father God. We pray, Father God, for our loved ones this far and near, Father God. We ask that you continue to keep your hand upon them, Father God. And all those who are blind, Father God, we ask that you open their eyes that they may be able to see your son Jesus, Father. And so we thank you, Father God, this morning. We thank you for this opportunity that you've given us to come out this morning to praise and worship you, Lord, and, and just give thanks to you, Father God, for allowing us to see another day. In your son Jesus Christ's name, amen. Amen. We bless the Lord, oh my soul, all of that is within me. Thank God for our Sunday school lesson. Thank God for being good all the time. And the word of prayer, there's no power on earth to compare to the power of prayer. Amen. We should always ASAP, always say a prayer. And I want you to know God hears and God answers prayer. Scripture lesson this morning from the book of Acts, the 16th chapter, beginning at verse 16. Acts 16th chapter, beginning at verse 16. Amen. As you secure word perfect, your device, amen, we ask that you read right along with us and go back and read the entire chapter, amen. This is dealing with that Philippian jailer, amen. Paul and Silas was locked in, but they couldn't lock Jesus out. So no matter where you are, if they lock you in, know that Jesus can't be locked out, amen. Our children sing the song, if Jesus says yes, nobody can say no. I say if God says so, if God says so, nobody can say no. Uh, verse 16, and it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with the spirit of divination met us and brought her master much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. And when her master saw the hope of their gains were gone, they caught Paul and Silas and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers and brought them to the magistrate saying, these men being Jews 
do exceedingly trouble our city and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive, neither to observe being Romans. Men will always try to change things, but we just pray that God would add a blessing to the reason and to the hearers of his word for the good and edification of our soul. It is time now to worship God through giving. Amen. I pray to God today that we would just, come on, give God a hand, just discover the joy of giving. Amen. God loves the cheerful giver. And I just pray wherever you are right now, you will discover the joy of giving because it is more blessed to give than to receive. Reverend Peterson is coming with our offertory prayer, and we just ask that you give God your best. He deserves nothing less. Reverend Peterson. Good morning, Garner Grove. I want to read a few uh, verses from um, 2 Corinthians 9. And it reads, But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he proposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly, or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. Let us pray. Father God, you are the giver of every good and perfect gift comes from you. We ask that you accept these gifts and use them to your glory, Father. May these gifts bring shelter to the homeless, comfort to the sick, and hope for the hopeless. And we ask all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 It is time now that we hear from heaven. The man of God, uh, the preacher of the hour is here. And amen. I wanted to present old glory, but I just believe that it's a perfect time for Reverend Thomas Stokes to come. He knows just as much as I know about our speaker of the hour. So I'm going to ask Reverend Stokes to come and present our speaker and let us receive the truth of the word of God and let us be able to just shout, oh, what a, jo a great day of victory this will be. Amen. Because we're going to, through the revelation of the truth of the word, we will see Jesus and we can shout Amen. victory. Amen. Glory to God. It's preaching time. Amen. What a great opportunity and pleasure it is to stand before you to introduce my friend, my brother, and even in some ways my mentor through the years. When I got here as a, as a young guy, he kind of took me under his wings, and he was my instructor for my when I became a deacon. He was a teacher, and he took us in the back and took, taught, taught us all the things that it meant to be a godly man and to stand before God's people and to honor God. So I'm excited to hear what God has to say to us through this great man of God. He's a husband of a great woman, Sister Margie Russ. He has an amazing daughter, Sister Sh uh, Michelle Russ, and they are faithful. And I think when you see their faithfulness, it speaks to his faithfulness. And one of the biggest honors I can say about him, I often hear his daughter talk about how great of a man he is. When your children can say how great of a man you is, that is a testament to what God is doing in your life. He is a gospel preacher. He will preach, and he always gives us words of encouragement. And when he stands up and says, oh, glory, it reminds me that he's saying to us that all the glory belongs to God. Receive you, the man of God, the Reverend James Russ. said I wouldn't be here today They said I'd never amount to anything But I'm glad to say that I'm on my way And I'm growing more and more each day
holding on. Yes, I am still. I'm holding on. I am still. I'm holding on to his hand. You see, when I was young, I gave God my. And I told him, please lead the way. Although the road has been rough and the going's been mighty tough, still I'm not going nowhere. I'm out here to stay. I've had to wipe many tears from my eyes, but I'm still, I'm holding on, yes I am still, I'm holding on. somebody. I'm still holding on. Are you still holding on today? A hand that will never fail. Come on, get a Lord some praise. He's worthy to be praised. You know he woke you up this morning with the right mind. He woke me up this morning with the right mind. So we just praise God in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us pray. 
Gracious Father, we come in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord. We just want to thank you for allowing us to be assembled in your house one more time among your saints. Lord, we realize we are living in troubled times, Lord, but we just continue to look up to you in this pandemic and so many other things that is going on in this world, Lord. But, Lord, we realize that you, you have the power to correct all these issues and things. And, Lord, we just ask that the word go forward, that hearts may be touched, that where we all may make a difference in this world. Lord, I just want to take the time and pray for a young man that I just got word last night that he had cancer from his sister. And I want to even pray for my daughter is still looking for that miracle. And pray for those that are looking for miracle. You can receive your miracle right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Because we are a church that walk by faith and not by sight. And Lord, we ask that as the gospel continue to go forward, we ask he that has the ear, let them hear what the church has to say, Lord. And Lord, we ask that whatever be said, you may take it back and be a blessing to others. And we just bless those that are watching this broadcast, Lord, wherever you may be. Lord, God love you and so do I. And Lord, we just pray these blessings in Jesus Christ's name. Let her heart say amen. amen. We give honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the author and the maker of our faith, and to our very own pastor, the Reverend Dr. Rufus Copeland, to all, and his first lady Copeland, his wife, which is always by his side, and to all the clergy. And we're just excited to see uh, uh, Reverend uh, Larry Edmund in the house today. Praise God for him being a part of the gospel worship service today here. For all the officers, uh, my uh, clergy friends, uh, deacons, uh, their wives, we just praise God for those that serving him in the mighty name of Jesus. And to my wife, uh, Sister Marjorie Russ, which has always been by my side for 39 years, and uh, we thank God for her. We walk by side. She walking by my side, and uh, for my daughter, we just praise God for her, her faith in the struggles in which she's going through. We, we just know that God is able. Uh, we're just going to tend uh, to walk by faith and not by sight. We had a beautiful Sunday school lesson this morning, Abraham. That's what it's all about: faith, not letting go. You won't hold you long, but there is a word from heaven. Uh, <clears throat> thank you, uh, Reverend Co Pastor Copeland, for reading that scripture for us. Uh, we're just going to pick off from where he left off. Uh, we're going to start, uh, first of all, I'd like to, for us to go to Isaiah mm -hmm. 41 and 10. We're going to read one verse, Isaiah 41 and 10, and then we're going to be moving along to Acts. Uh, chapter 16, we're going to read 22 to 26. All right. okay. Isaiah 41 10 reads, Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Acts 16, 22 to 26 reads, And the multitude rose up together against them, and the majesty rent off their clothes, and commanded to beat them. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Who having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. Verse 25, but at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sung praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, 
so that the foundation of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone bands were loosed. I submit to you, the world will beat you down. I say the world will beat you down if you allow it. Tongue lashing. You know how we use this tongue to talk about people. That tongue can uh, lower their morale. It could put them in a prison. You can be out of prison right now in your home. Prison with health issues and problems that we all face in different ones. You can be a prison dealing with your financial affairs, stress. All these things are just not good for us. You can be in a prison in a relationship, a relationship that's full of abuse. Oh, bless his name, somebody. So I submit to you. Our subject this morning will be, when life get complicated, I say when life get complicated, what do you do? When life get complicated, what do you do? Today I want to speak about a miraculous power of our God, the power that protects us. The power that saved you and I. The power will save you if you're not saved. We're talking about the power that woke us up this morning. The power gave us breath to breathe. The power that enabled us to know how to love according to God's holy word. Devil Storm, when I was in Devil Storm, you know, being on the battlefield, I felt like I was in a prison. I couldn't get to see my dad and that Red Cross had notified me and said he had only a few days to live and I hadn't seen him in quite some time due to my time in Germany. But I prayed and sung praises unto the Lord and you know the Lord, he will make a way somehow. Not only did he bless me, when the war was over, I was able to fly back home and Spend some time with him. Matter of fact, it was about three or four more years after that, God called him home. So God is good. We're not here to stay. We just have to do what God has called us to do. Oh, bless his name, somebody. He will strengthen us. He will help us, and surely he will uphold us with his right, which is righteousness, his right hand. Why? Because our God is faithful. Our God is a God of, he's a protector. He is our Savior. Can I get a witness, somebody? You see, no matter how old or how young you are, no matter what type of crisis we may be facing today or have encountered yesterday, God made us a promise to protect us. Uh, my hope today is to encourage each of, uh, each of you to keep walking in faith. This church has a motto, we walk by faith and not by sight. So I encourage you to trust God like you never before, knowing that God, before you, he faith, that face your problems, before the doctor gives you that diagnosis, before you lose your job, or any difficult situation, you can take comfort and be assured in God. He's already working things out according to his plan. Last Wednesday during revival, Reverend Bean had a, a word for us. He said, we're going to be all right. Do you believe we're going to be all right? Oh, bless his name, somebody. So when life get complicated, what do you do? In the midst of our suffering, God's grace is able to sustain us because we have his holy word. We have each other. This morning I want to look at Paul and Silence, two men that God used on a missionary journey under the grace of God. You know, he give it, even though we don't deserve it, he give it to us anyway. 
That's why I look at that little word and say it's a big word mean a lot. God's riches at Christ's expense. You know he died for us on Calvary. He died for you and he died for me. We know from our ships reading that they were in prison. It was a difficult time in their lives. Which leads me to point number one. Don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. No matter what situation you're in. What's going on in your life. Even with the pandemic right now. Don't lose hope. I was looking at Deuteronomy 31 and 6. It say, be strong of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he, it is he that doeth good with thee, go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Fear, church, my brothers and sisters, can be the enemy most popular weapon that he used against us. Notice I say not power, but popular. Let us now talk about things going wrong here. Paul and Silas were having a bad day. There are times where we perhaps may have bad days. They are out serving Jesus. They are doing what God had called them to do when suddenly the crowd Turned on them. Be careful of the crowd. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. The authorities beat them miraculous and threw them in jail. Why? Because Paul had healed a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and predicted the future. This was how, check this out, this was how she earned m money for her owners. Not for herself, but for her owners. When the owners of the slave girl realized that their ways of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas. Yes, sir. After they had been severely beaten, they were thrown into a prison. The jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. Yes, sir. We must be going. We must. Be going on, what must be going on in the mind of Paul and Silas? Right. They could have felt that God has abandoned them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we feel like the issues in our life, God has abandoned us. Mm -hmm. They could have felt that he didn't care, that he didn't care about what was happening. They could have felt that God had withdrawn his hand of protection from them. They may have been even a little upset because they had been exposed to such abuse. But these men didn't lose their hope. So I challenge you, don't lose your hope. You see, we all face roadblocks and mountains in our lives. But that doesn't mean that God is telling us to quit. It doesn't mean he's withdrawn us from the blessing of the protection of his hand. Just take a look at the picture of Paul. He's doing what God called him to do. I challenge you that God has a calling on each of our lives. God has a purpose for you and I. I challenge you to find out what your purpose is. To walk in your purpose. There are men, women, boys, and girls needs to be saved. Oh, bless his name. We need to be an example of Jesus Christ. Uh, did Paul lose hope? He, did he do what many of us do? Feel abandoned? Stop going to church? You can have church right in your home. We are the church if we're born again believers. Did he stop praying? Stop studying the Bible? No. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners were listening to them. 
Oh, bless his name. Uh, not only through the word, words of God can go out through songs, can bless people. Oh, bless his name. Paul and Silence were worshipers. Do we have worshipers in God's house? Uh, they were victors, overcoming defeat. They were conquerors. They were full of joy and praise. And it isn't their response. That's a good example for us to follow when the enemy knock us down, chain us up, and lock us up. Oh, the world expects us to feel sorry for ourselves, to give up, to blame God. It's easy to blame God. But we can follow Paul and Silence's example. We can start by praying and singing praises unto God. And I love singing Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want. I love calling him up because it's a line that's never busy. I love the song, Walk With Me, Lord, while I'm on this tedious journey. Friends don't treat me like they used to. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Since I laid my burden down. Oh, bless his name. Every child of God need to have a song in their heart. Psalms 34, 1 through 4 say, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make their boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, won't you magnify the Lord with me? And let us exhort his name together. See, I sought the Lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Oh, God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. So I challenge, I want to challenge you to take, to just try it. At the very first sign of temptation, trouble, or any form of opposition it will come oh bless his name we instead of whining or quitting try praying and singing praises to God when the ground begins to shake that's not the end of the story because if you look at verse 26 you'll find this word suddenly I say you'll find this word suddenly so when life get complicated what do you do? What leads me to point number two. God will show up. Jeremiah 27 5 say, I have made the earth, the man and the beast that are upon the ground by my great power and my outstretched arms and have given it into womb it seems meet unto me. God had a purpose for Jeremiah. Even in the, before his mother's womb, he got a purpose for you and I today. Oh, bless his name. What I love about our God is that he's a God of suddenly. Even when we don't see our way out, when we have been locked up, even when we are lost, have lost our hope, and even been beat and stripped, everything suddenly our God will show up. Oh, he will show up in the midnight hour. He will show up when you least expect him to. Oh, bless his name. Suddenly there was a violent earthquake. The foundations of the prisons were shaken. At once, all the prison doors flew open and every chain came loose. Oh, don't you want your chains to come loose today? Oh, bless his name, somebody. What a miracle. I don't know about you, but I stand in the need of a miracle. A miracle for my daughter. A miracle for you. Whatever that's going on in your life. See, I don't have to know your name. But if you stand in need of a miracle, I'm praying along with you. God sent us a miracle. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, this guy that I got information about, his name is Kenny. You might be watching, but wherever you are, 
I'm praying right now for you. I'm praying for your miracle right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Michelle, I'm your father. I'm always praying for you. We praying for a miracle in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, bless his name, somebody. When we, as Christians, when we find out when one hurts, all of us hurt. Cause guess what? We are family. We are in the body of Christ. We are family. We are God's chosen people. God is all about family. You ought to give him praise. Lord, shake our foundation. Shake a senior earthquake. Send it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We're in the midst of a pandemic. Send your earthquake right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Because I'm a believer in the mighty name of Jesus. Everything is going to be all right. Anybody here needs to be set free. Look to the hills with coming all our help. Our help comes from the Lord because we know he made heaven and earth. Oh, bless his name, somebody. Bless his holy name. Paul and Silas didn't wait to worship after the miracle. They worshiped God before the miracle. Yeah. Hebrew 13, 15 says, Though Jesus therefore let us continually offer God a sacrifice of praise. Right now, you may not feel anything. Right now, you don't feel the ground shaking. Right now, you don't see the chains falling off. Right now, you don't see the doors opening. But worship God anyway. I say worship God anyway. Worship him for who he is. Worship him for what he hasn't even done yet. Give him a sacrifice of praise. I know some of you are still waiting on a breakthrough. But trust in God. Trust in his holy word. In the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, verse 27 says the jailer woke up. Now how in the world a jailer going to up, wake up in the middle of an earthquake? Some things you have said can't explain. The jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoner had escaped. Mm -hmm. According to the Romans' law, if a prisoner escaped, the jailer would receive the prisoner's punishment. And so the jailer, he drew his sword. But in verse 28, Paul shouted, Verse 28, Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. We are all here. The jailer fell trembling before Paul and Silas and asked, sirs, what must I do to be saved? So if you need to be saved, God has made a way for you to, to be saved right now. The jailer is amazed. He knew that the God, he knew that God had been singing, that the song that was singing was real. Mother Bonwell always would sing a song, let it be real. Let it be real. He's powerful. He's merciful because he showed up. And he spared his life. He asked, what must I do to be saved? In verse 31, they replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You and your household. Not only were Paul and Silas saved, but so were the jail and his whole family. Ain't it wonderful to know that your whole family is saved? Paul and Silas, they praised God in spite of their circumstances because they trusted God. We see Paul knew that even before the creation of the world, that God already had a plan. So God has a plan for you and I. Oh, bless his name. When life gets complicated, what do you do? 
what leads me to my final point, point number three. Yes. Trust his plan. Yes, sir. Trust his plan. Amen. Proverbs 3 and 5, and, uh, chapter, five uh, chapter 3, verses 5 and 6, say, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lead not into thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. So I don't know what you're facing today. Or what, ex- what you experience, you experience tomorrow. But I do know before you face a problem, God is already, is already working the plan. Uh, Jeremiah says it in Jeremiah first chapter 4 and 5. Say, uh, then the word of the Lord came unto me saying, before I was formed in the belly, I knew and I deigned thee as a prophet to the nation. God has a purpose for you and me. Walk in your calling and trust in his plan for your life. Trust God. Praise him. Realize that long before we got uh, going to go into a situation and long before we have ran into a problem, God always had had a plan. And his plan is better than ours. In closing, the Bible says it this way. His thoughts and ways are beyond ours. But we must learn to fully trust him because we know that he's an awesome God. He's a merciful God. Oh, bless his name. He, uh, because he's God and we're worshiping through the son, Jesus Christ. So when life gets complicated, what do you do? As the songwriter says, what do you do when you've done all you can and it seems like it's just never enough? And what do you say when your friends turn away and you're all alone? Just stand and endure. God has a plan. Jesus can save you if you're lost. Jesus can help you if you're in a need. He will help you if you need comfort. Yes, if your heart is broken from life situations, health and all these other things, he can mend your broken hearts. He will keep you company when you're lonely. Just trust in Jesus. Jesus can restore us when we have fallen. Every now and then you will fall. He will give us the, give you the power and the strength to get back up. Oh, bless his name. When life get complicated, what do you do? Pray and sing praises unto the Lord. May God bless you. May heaven smile on each and every one of you. God bless. Amen. Thank God. What a word. What a word. What a word. Amen. When life gets complicated, amen, what do you do? Uh, I must tell you that life will get complicated. There was a Philippian jailer. Life got complicated. He saw that his prisoners was, the jail was open and his prisoners was ready to leave out, so to speak. And his mind went to self-destruction, kill himself. Amen. But he said, it says here in the scripture, now I, I just want someone out there to get this, amen. And uh, it says, sirs, what must I do to be saved? Yeah. And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved in thy house. His problem was not the magistrates. His problem was sin. Believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You're not going to be saved from these men, but you will be saved for eternity from your sin. You have just looked into eternity, my brother, and you saw that you were lost. Now, God wants to save you from your problem. You will never have to spend eternity separated from God if you would just believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our Sunday school lesson dealt with this morning is called justification, justified. Just as if I'd never sinned. If you want to remember justified, just remember just as if I'd never sinned. 
by faith in Jesus Christ, God will treat you just as if I had never sinned. <laughs> and he will impute righteousness to your account. It's like God putting billions of dollars into your account when you are bankrupt in sin. Look at our God. I, my, why don't we just give him a hand? He's just so good. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Not to prolong you the time, but Reverend Russ has really given us a great word. Our Sunday school lesson was great. Amen. Understand that it's no works of righteousness. There's nothing you and I can do to impress God. Amen. Nothing at all. So stop trying to impress God and start walking by faith. Amen. We bless God. Thank God for the message and thank God for the Sunday school lesson. We're going to go to God in prayer and we just ask that you walk with him this week. Amen. And talk with him and he will assure you, you are his own by grace through faith. Father God, we thank you for all that are here. We thank you for all that have tuned in. And we just thank you, Lord, for our sisters this morning. Uh, Miss Edith singing to us this morning that God is good all the time. Sister Tanya, um, Blackburn Bowling giving it to us this morning, just blessing us, Father God, with the understanding that we are still holding on to your unchanging hand. Father God, help us to do this throughout the week. And then, Lord, give us the, the mindset to be a blessing to someone else. Bring someone else into the covenant relationship with God so that they will spend eternity in heaven. And we pray now that the grace of Almighty God, love, communion, fellowship with the Holy Spirit, would forever abide, rule, and keep the hearts of these thy people this day, now, and forever. And the church of the living God said, Amen. As always, thank you for tuning in to our live stream service. Next week's service will begin at 11 o'clock a.m. We hope you enjoy today's service and experience the love of God in this fellowship. See you next Sunday and have a blessed week. God be with you. God be with you. God be with you till we meet again.